Hi, good morning. I'm Pastor Waleska, and welcome to Dobbins Memorial United Methodist Church. Today is a very special day because you are here with us, and I am excited to worship with you again. For the last couple of weeks, I have told you that we will be sharing amazing and good news with you. Well, the time has come, and today is the day that I have the honor and the joy to announce that the sanctuary will be reopened on Sunday, October 18, 2020. Yes, you are all invited to come and worship in person starting on October 18 at 10.30 a.m. For those that can worship in person with us, we will continue to live stream our service in YouTube. In the next couple of days, you will receive a letter from me with more information and a video will be shared on social media with more details about the safety measures and logistics in order for you to attend the service. But we are excited to see you again and we can wait to worship in person with you. Please remember, that all this information is subject to change by CDC recommendations or government guidance. But please keep the faith, let us keep us um, joyful, and we will see you soon. Two, three, four. One with the Father, one with the Spirit, one with the Son of God. One with our sister, one with our brother, one family by the blood. Make us one, make us one, your will be done. Make us one. One heart with heaven, one mind connected, one body unified. Bind us together, now and forever. Jesus be glorified, make us one, make us one, your will be done, make us one, make us one, make us one. We confess we've been afraid We repent of all our pride Let all the hurt be washed away For all the wars and all the violence Against our enemy Come heal our land with your great river Restore the family And make us one Make us one Your will be done Make us one, make us one, make us one, that your kingdom come, make us one. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life. Please let us feast on you and find nourishment 
for our souls. You are the resurrection and the life. Let us find true life and victory in you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Let us love you with all our hearts, soul, and mind, and strength. And now, united in one spirit, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. Stars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes our hearts can say. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. Stars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes our hearts can say. Never once did we ever walk alone, never once did you leave us on our own? You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, never once. Did we ever walk alone? Carried by your constant grace, held within your perfect peace. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once. Did you leave us on our own? You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Yes, you are faithful, God. Christians by our love, by our love, yes they'll know 
we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, we will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes they'll know. We are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus is only son and all praise to the spirit who makes us one and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love And here is a time when we invite you not only to be present, but to have the opportunity to put your faith into actions by supporting our ministry. Giving is one of the ways that we show our gratitude to God and that we care for our communities and others around the world. So how can you give? You can send your tithes and offerings via mail to the address on the screen or through our website, dobbinschurch.org, and click on the Donate button. It is secure. You don't need a PayPal account, and you can donate with a credit card or a debit card. And here is a little taste of what happens when you give. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move for your support together we are sharing the gospel and changing lives
I'm praying not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me because of them and their witness about me. The goal is for all of them to become one heart and mind, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, so that they might be one heart and mind with us. Then the world might believe that you, in fact, sent me. The same glory you gave me, I gave them, so they'll be as unified and together as we are, I in them and you in me. And then they'll be mature in this oneness and give the godless world evidence that you've sent me and loved them in the same way you've loved me. Today is the final day of our sermon series, Catch Your Breath. And we are also celebrating World Communion Sunday. Most of you don't know this about me, but I have four siblings. We all have different personalities, different views of life and the world. We have different careers. We have different parenting styles. We disagree in many things, including religion. But even though we disagree, and like any other group of siblings, we also fight. My mom always said to us that no matter what, we are family. No matter how different you guys are, no matter what is your opinion, no matter how mad you get um, with your brothers or your sisters, you are family. And that will never change. And I am sure that most of you will agree with my mom, but my family uh, have gone through a lot. And for us, this is not just a simple statement, is a reality. When I was seven years old, my parents got divorced. And as any other child that experienced that, I was confused and I couldn't understand clearly what was happening. But short after the divorce was final, it became clear to me that my dad divorced my mom because he wanted to get married with my mom's sister. So my whole family was devastated and divided. Our relationships were broken and we didn't have anything to bind us together anymore. Last week, we talked about God being a relational God and how the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one, and we as God's creation are also relational. We need God in our lives, but we also need one another. Our relationship with our Maker was broken by sin, and sin separated us from the Creator and from God's purpose for our lives. But we were created in unity and for unity. But I want to be clear in something here. When I'm talking about unity, I'm not talking about uniformity. Being one body in Christ does not mean that we are all alike, or that we are gonna talk alike, or worship alike, enjoy the same things, the same activities, or have the same ideas. But it is important for Christians to know and to understand that what unites us is stronger than what divides us. As the body of Christ, we need to understand that our words, actions, and inactions have repercussions that affect not only our lives, but the world. In Jesus' prayer for all the believers, he not only prayed for the disciples, but for all who will believe in him. How beautiful is that? Jesus was praying for you and for me. But more important yet is that Jesus knew how critical our unity was. He knew how critical our unity was in him in order for us to continue his mission and work in the world. Jesus is in the Father, 
and the Father is in the Son. The Son is in us, and for that reason, we are in the Father. But we cannot forget that those that are in the Son and also those who believe and will believe are also in him. And this is the essence of what celebrating um, World Communion Sunday is. The fact that through our many diversities, through many differences between us, through even if we are from different countries, even if we speak different languages, even if we pray different, even if we worship different, even if our families are different, we are one. We are one body. We are one in God. We are one in Jesus. And we are one in the Spirit. And I know that we all probably are saying, yes, yes, pastor, I understand, I get it. We are one, we sing the hymn already, we read the scripture, and we tell that to other people too. And it is fine, we get it, we know we are one. Yes, we are one. But we are one until election time is here. And then we become us versus them. We are one until an African-American person is killed by a police officer, or until a police officer is ambushed or killed by an African-American person, then it's us versus them. Or we are one until a family cross the border, and even the little kids are treated as criminals, and put in cages, then we are us versus then. We are one until we have a difference in opinions. Because it's hard for us to understand God's vision of a world where all humanity is one people peaceful and united. You know, our vision and knowledge of God is too narrow. And most of the time, we humanize God. I, and I, know, I know that this might be a little controversial, but think about it for a moment without, without even thinking about it and, and, and with no bad intention when I talk about God, most of us immediately think about He. Most people have a mental picture of Jesus as a white person. Most people see God as a, as a, as a Protestant. Most people see God as an American, with American values, with 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 a background of American culture. And the list can go on and on and on. And I'm not saying that this is completely wrong, but I am just saying that this is something that don't allow us to see others as one when we see God as we see ourselves. We forget sometimes that God is the creator of all. God is God, and that's it. He is God. God is the God of all. God is the God of the white people, the African-American people, the black American people, the Hispanic, the Latinx, the Asians. He is the God of all. God is God of, of, of men and women and children around the world. God is God of the Methodists and the Catholics and the Baptists and even the Muslims and the Jews. The God we love 
the God who is the Father of Jesus Christ is the God of all people, of all ages, of all nations, and all genders. And today, in the midst of a pandemic that affects all, in the midst of protest that affects all, in the midst of the elections, in the midst of our difference in opinions, today, once again, we hear Jesus' prayer for all believers, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Brothers and sisters, today, more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus prayed the same way. He prayed the same way for you and for me and for those who will believe. I remember one Mother's Day after my mom and my dad got divorced. My mom looked at me and with tears in her eyes, she said, get ready. We're going to your grandmother's. And when we got to my grandmother's house, my dad and my aunt, were there, and my mom forgave them. You know, my mom was not a Christian woman, and I am sure she didn't know a lot about the Bible, but she knew that unity is not bound in opinions or loyalty, but it is bound in love. John Wesley said, on his sermon number 55. Persons may be quite right in their opinions and yet have no religion at all. And on the other hand, persons may be truly religious who hold many wrong opinions. With time, I have learned that before I am part of a religion organization or a political party or a particular race, before all that, I am a Christian first, bound to others by the love and the grace of God. Not the love that I earn or that I deserve, but the one that was given to me by grace. For that reason, I want to love like Jesus. I want to love besides the difference in opinions. I want to love because God loved me first, because I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayers, because I want the world to know that he is real, that he is the way, that he is the truth, that he is the light, and no one comes to God except through Jesus Christ. Every first Sunday of the month, we celebrate communion. But what that does, does it really mean to you? Think about it for a moment. John Wesley said that the Lord's Supper is a means of grace, a special way by which we experience God's grace in our lives. But let's be real. How often do we pause and reflect and allow the full meaning of the grace of God to sink in in that holy moment? As the Jews and the bread Feel our stomach. Do you feel the connection between the triune God and all people? 
the Apostle Paul teaches that because there is one loaf, we, who are many, are one body, for we all partake of one loaf. Monthly, weekly, and daily, Christians around the world share the sacrament of the Holy Communion. Some might use bread, crackers, or tortillas. Others may use wine. Some may kneel, some may stand. Some may drink juice from the common cup, while others will drink from a tiny, itty-bitty individual cup. It may be called a sacrament or a memorial meal or a Eucharist or a love feast. The people coming to the table may be saints or sinners, white, brown, or black, gay or straight, Republicans or Democrats, young, old, male, or female but they are all one in Jesus. We all know how easy it is, especially on these days in modern society, to be divided. We know how easy it is to hate and to bully, to separate ourselves and point out people as them versus us. But Jesus calls us to a different way of living, a way that rises above all hatred and division, a way of peace and unity, a way of grace and love. So as you come to the table this morning, as we share in this meal today with Christians around the world, allow God's grace to wipe away feelings of division and let that grace unite you as one in the body of Christ. Today, we're just going to take communion and we're going to approach the table in a simple way because what I really think that God is asking us to do is to come humbly and honestly to the table and to partake on the table of grace and to examine our lives, our words, our actions, and our inaction and to be transformed by the Holy Spirit so we can be really one in the Spirit, one in the Lord, one in the body of Christ. On the night that he gave himself for us, he took the bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, and he said, take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, remember me. And now, take, eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. and drink the blood of the new covenant of love and unity in God and unity with one another.
And since it's the last day of our sermon series, Catch Your Breath, we're going to have once again our breathing exercise. So we're going to inhale for four, we're going to exhale for four. Inhale. Exhale. Let's do it again. Inhale. All God's unity. Exhale, all division. Amen. I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, sermon series and that you continue to practice the breathing exercise every day in your life. Um, I think that it's been a great experience for me, and I hope that it's a great blessing for you. And today, we were invited to the table of forgiveness and unity, and now... We go feeling refreshed, restored, renewed to share the love of Christ with others. Amen. Well, somewhere in the back of my mind You lead me to another place and time where I don't grieve you at all you 
Your mercy like a river flows to me I want to drown in that endless sea So I don't grieve you at all Floating down the steady street Past empty lies and broken dreams And promises I never could keep Take me to your hidden spring And wash me clean of everything And sanctify as deep cries out the deep I want to die so you may truly live In my life, Lord, that's all I have to give And I won't grieve you at all Your love is living water to my soul And yes, you are, I finally am whole Where I don't grieve you at all Past empty lies and broken dreams And promises I never could keep Take me to your hidden spring And wash me clean of everything And sanctify as deep cries out to deep They don't know what to do If confronted with truth Looking straight in their eye They don't know what to do They don't know what to do With him They don't know what to do With him Now any plain Jane they just couldn't explain They don't know what to do They feel as if their life is just a runaway train They don't know what to do They don't know what to do with him They don't know what to do with him they don't know what to do with the Savior of the world. He's just a stranger in a distant land. If we are His hands and His feet in this world, we've got to make them understand. Jesus died for every woman, child, and man. Oh 
don't know what to do Existing without living is the name of the game They don't know what to do They don't know what to do They don't know what to do The answer to the question Jesus, God's only son They don't know what to do They don't know what to do Child and man 